Hi, so I had a request from a couple of people to ask whether I could do a video about using RFID sensors to create a puzzle where you have to place objects in the correct positions to activate a lock or to deactivate a lock. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got four cheap RFID sensors uh, which are all wired through this kind of rat's nest of wires to an Arduino here at the bottom. And then I've got a 12 volt maglock, which is being uh, controlled by this little relay here. So I'll show you the puzzle in action to start with, just to show how it works. So what I do is just secure my maglock to start with. And then I've got four of these little RFID tags. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up the tags uh, with the correct sensor. Uh, so I just put numbers on them just so I could actually um, check myself. And as I place this last tag here, the puzzle completes and the maglock releases, controlled by the Arduino. Uh, now, I'm going to do that one more time, uh, but this time I'm going to show you the serial output from the Arduino as well, just to show you um, how it appears from the puzzle side of things. So I'll just reset the Arduino to start with and put my maglock back on and then if I turn on uh, my serial output here so that's just showing you the output from the last run if I clear that and then run through it again and I'll show you what's actually happening so each of these tags has a unique ID uh, identified with it and that's what makes RFID puzzles quite uh, powerful compared to simple puzzles involving magnets and read switches or hall sensors or something like that because that will just detect uh, the presence of any magnet. These sensors will detect the presence of this particular tag or any particular tag. So when I place a tag against the first sensor what you'll see on the output there is you'll read this hex key associated with each tag. Uh, and if I place several there, you'll see um, as they change, as I add and release tags to each of the sensors, I'm getting kind of a running um, sort of position of the current state of the puzzle. And all that happens is I've programmed in which are the correct IDs that need to be associated with each tag. There it is. And the puzzle completes and the lock releases. So let's take a closer look at the wiring and I think the easiest way to do that is to look at um, a diagram like this which I drew in fritzing uh, rather than the real thing which like I say is a, a bit of a mess. Now to be honest even the wiring in fritzing uh, looks horrendous when you first look at it it's just like a tangled mess of nonsense um, but actually it's not that bad um, when you start to examine what's going on here. So and I think the probably easiest way to do that is actually if I just get rid of um, some of the extra sensors to start with just so we uh, if I show you the case of just um, considering one sensor to start with and that would look something like uh, this uh, so if I just get rid of the white cables there okay so um, here I have a single RFID sensor now my sensors are powered by 3.3 um, volts so I've got the 3.3 line coming around the back from the Arduino here and also a ground line as well uh, and they're connected here now uh, I've also got a reset pin that's this brown cable that's going here and that's connected to pin 8 now these blue, purple and green lines here, that's something called um, the SPI interface or serial peripheral interface. Um, and that's a protocol that allows um, a controller like an Arduino to communicate with several devices all attached to the same bus. Um, so these th three wires here, the, the green, the purple and the blue, are going to be shared and use those same pins um, across all of the sensors. Uh, so the, uh, the pin 11, the blue line, that's what's called the mozzie line or the master out slave in. Um, so master out slave in, you can think of that like a, a transmit line which is going from the Arduino to the sensor. Uh, the purple line that's going into pin 12, that's the meso line. And that's kind of the reverse. That's master in, slave out. 
um, which you can think of as the Arduino receiving messages back from the sensor. So we've got a, a send out and a receive back. And then the green line is the system clock, um, which is uh, transmitted by the controller, by the Arduino, used to synchronize communications with all of the devices on the SPI bus. So uh, those lines, the, the system clock, the MISO and the, the, uh, the MOSI and the MISO are shared between all of the devices on an SPI interface. So how do you know which device um, the Arduino is communicating with? Well, that's done by this yellow line, which is something called the slave select line uh, or SS. So that line has a uh, signal, a low signal driven to it on the device that is uh, communicating with the Arduino at the time over the SPI interface. So every device needs a unique slave select pin assigned to it on the Arduino but these pins here can be shared, in fact, have to be shared. And I'm also sharing the reset line between all the sensors as well. You can, if you want, have uh, an individual reset line if you need to uh, reset sensors individually, um, but I'm sharing ones so they'll all be reset together. Um, so if I add in, uh, or if I add back rather, um, another sensor, uh, or let's just do one at a time actually, that's probably easy, isn't it? So if we now consider this sensor here, what you'll see is that the clock line is going to exactly the same pin, 13, as the first sensor, and the meso and the mozzie lines are also shared with the other ones, and the reset line is here as well. The only thing that uh, this sensor has additional wiring-wise compared to the first sensor is it has its own unique slave select pin. And then if I add uh, all of the sensors back in, you'll see exactly the same thing again. Shared clock line, shared mozzie and miso, shared reset line, and a unique slave select line. And there we have the full um, circuit back again. So it looks like a mess because these wires are crossing out all over the place, but actually it's, it's not logically actually too hard. And then over the other side of the Arduino, um, I'm using, this is a five volt relay here. So I'm using the five volt output from the Arduino and ground. And then I'm using the A naught pin as the signal line um, to activate the relay, uh, which in turn controls a 12 volt supply to the maglock. And that's what releases the puzzle. Okay, so now let's have a look at the code which is running on the Arduino. Um, so just like in pretty much all my code, I always start off with a define that just says if this debug is defined here, I'm going to out output some more information via the serial connection. And that's what I was showing you uh, earlier when it was actually reading out the ID of the RFID tags that each sensor was reading. Um, there's two libraries that I'm using. Uh, this is the standard SPI um, library uh, for any time you want to use a sensor connected over an SPI bus. Um, and then this is uh, an MFRC 522 library, which I will give you the link to um, a library on GitHub. Um, it's by, uh, I think, Miguel Balboa. Um, it's a fantastic library. Um, so I'm very grateful the, for the creation of that because it's saved me a lot of time. And that takes care of a lot of the, the low level interfacing with the uh, RFID sensors. Um, so it provides a, a lot of just helper functions that make it in, uh, easier to, to code for them. Um, so uh, here's my global section. So this is uh, all stuff that is not going to change um, throughout the lifetime of the puzzle. You just set it up once. Um, so I'm defining, I've, I'm using four readers. Um, obviously you can customize this puzzle to, to have a different number of sensors and a different number of tags that were placed. Um, you can't extend it infinitely, um, I should just point out. Um, there's a couple of different reasons why. Firstly, um, you need to have a little bit of spacing between uh, the readers. So RFID is, is radio frequency identification, and each of those sensors is uh, emitting uh, uh, radio waves which are detected by the tags and they energize a, a, uh, an integrated circuit that kind of sends a wave back again. And you will get interference if you try to place um, sensors too close to each other. So you need to have a, a physical amount of space between each sensor to avoid interference. But having said that, the SPI interface itself 
is really only designed to work over quite short ranges. It's designed to work between components within the same um, sort of circuit board nearly. Um, so if you increase the space between your sensors so as to avoid interference, you actually end up running longer SPI cables and then you risk um, that getting uh, out of sync or, or not uh, not powering enough. So um, I've tried this with four. I can make it work with five as well without any problems. But if I go beyond that, you do start to run into um, run into difficulties. So I'd recommend probably no more than four to keep this puzzle reliable. Um, here I just defined the the pins which are going to be used for that yellow slave select line to go the, to each sensor. And here's the common reset pin that they're all using. Um, this is uh, where I'm actually defining uh, the MFRC522 uh, object uh, for each sensor. Uh, and in this line here, this is effectively my puzzle solution. So uh, every tag, and, and my RF readers came with a tag and uh, with a keycard fob as well. And you can also buy like the individual little sticky RFID tags. Each one will have a unique ID. And in this code, at least, when you hold it up, if you're in debug mode, it'll tell you the ID of each tag. So what I've done is just copy down that ID and um, place them in the right order here. So this is the correct ID that needs to be held up next to sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, and sensor four to solve the puzzle. Um, I'll set up this in a little array to tell me what the current ID being read by each sensor is. And finally, I'll declare the um, the lock pin. So this is the pin that is uh, assigned to the relay, which is then going to release the mag lock when the puzzle is solved. Um, okay, so here's my setup function. Um, print out a little bit of debug information. Uh, set the lock to be locked when the puzzle is started. Begin the SPI interface. And then this is where I initialize uh, all of the readers. Um, so this is the main function here. So I, I loop over all of the readers and I call this PCD init, um, which has the uh, array entry that has the SS pin for each, so the slave select pin for each reader and also the reset pin. Um, remember, I'm using the same reset pin for each. That doesn't matter, but they have a unique SS pin each. Um, I saw this uh, used uh, somewhere on, I think it's on the original library GitHub code as a way of possibly increasing the sensitivity of the antennas. Um, there's a function called set antenna again, but um, on my readers at least, it didn't seem to make much difference. I'm not sure if they're already set to maximum or not, so I've just commented that out for now. Um, and then I've just um, printed a little bit of, of debug information just so I know that all the antennas are, are online and functioning correctly. Okay, and then in the main loop, um, what I do on each iteration of the main loop, well, first of all, I assume that the puzzle hasn't been solved yet. And I'm also going to assume that since uh, last time we checked, nothing has changed. So just two, two billions. Um, and then again, I'm going to loop through each reader, um, initialize them. And then I'm going to use this function here to say, is there a card that the uh, reader can read? And if there is, um, get the UID, so get the UI, uh, unique identifier and put it into this uh, red RFID stream, which I defined up here. So we're going through each sensor and we're getting the hex value of the ID of the card that it can read. If that ID is different, um, oh sorry, I just got a bit too far there. If that ID is different to the value in the array that has the current ID for that sensor, then something has changed. So we'll just set that flag to true and we'll update the current uh, ID for that sensor. Um, and then we'll say, well, if the current ID is not equal to the right ID for this sensor, then the puzzle hasn't been solved. That's what that line is saying. So if we've gone through all of the loops and every sensor has uh, failed this test then the puzzle has been solved because they must all have read the correct ID and then we'll uh, just uh, sort of clean up and um, turn the turn the sensor off and go on to the next one so every loop we read through all of the sensors check what value they have 
if it's different from the value that we last knew they had, we set this flag as true, update the value, and we check whether they're all right or not, and set the puzzle true. Um, now, if any of them have got a different value than what we knew last time, um, again, this is where I dump that information that you saw the screen earlier, and that's just useful for debugging just to make sure it's all working. And also, if you wanted to, uh, let's say you wanted to edit the puzzle to supply a different solution instead, that's a, a convenient way of just reading what the ID attached to each uh, tag is. And then finally, if we've got this far through the loop and the puzzle solved tag has been set to true, um, then we're going to call the on solve callback. Um, and that's just this little thing down at the bottom, um, which is actually really simple. Uh, all it says is it uh, sends a message to the serial communication, sets the relay to low, which is going to release the mag lock, and then it just enters a, an infinite loop and it just stays in that state forever. Um, but obviously you could do anything you want when the puzzle was solved. You can uh, flash an LED or you could set off an air horn or buzzer or whatever you wanted. That, that would just be entered into this uh, section here. So that's about all there is I can say about this particular puzzle really. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please write them underneath the video. And if you've got any suggestions of um, other puzzles that you might like me to uh, create in the future, uh, please let me know as well. Uh, I'll write a few more um, in the description. I'll write a bit more information about where I purchased these components from as well, so that you can um, do it yourself with exactly the same components. The total cost of manufacturing this is probably about £20. Um, then obviously what you'd do is you could dress it up um, in whatever theme you wanted to use in your room. Um, these tags will read through about 20 centimetres um, and you can remove the actual electronics from inside these fobs and set them inside uh, any objects you want, so little statuettes or in a book or some artefact or object that the player has to retrieve and place in front of a sensor. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching.